Hey there, welcome back. Today we're going to learn about the simple continuous suture, a really handy technique that's used all the time in surgical wound closure. Whether you're in training or just brushing up on the basics, this is one of the first suturing methods you'll want to master. You might also hear it called the baseball stitch, and that's because the pattern it creates looks kind of like the stitching on a baseball. Pretty easy to remember, right? So, how does it work? It's actually very similar to the simple interrupted suture, except here we're not stopping to tie a knot after every stitch. Instead, once the first stitch is placed, the suture continues in one smooth running line all the way to the end. To start, we place the first stitch and tie a square knot to anchor it. Then we trim off the extra thread. From there, we move down the wound placing evenly spaced sutures without tying knots in between. To finish the suture line, we can tie the final knot directly to the last loop or cross to the other side, similar to the vertical mattress technique. It's quick, it's clean, and it looks neat when done well. Now let's talk about spacing, which is super important. In the short bite technique, you aim for 5 mm depth and 5 mm spacing between the stitches. In the long bite technique, it's more like 10 mm deep and 10 mm apart. The key is to keep things consistent. That helps with both tension and healing. Alright, so why do surgeons love this technique? For one, it's fast. It saves valuable time, especially in long procedures. It also applies even tension across the wound, which helps reduce tissue stress. And because you're only tying knots at the beginning and end, there's less foreign material left behind, meaning a lower risk of inflammation or reaction. But of course, there are a few downsides to be aware of. If the suture breaks at any point, it can compromise the entire closure. And if you apply too much or too little tension, you might run into healing problems, from poor approximation to full wound dehiscence. So, where do we use this technique? Honestly, it shows up everywhere. You'll find it in general surgery, plastic and reconstructive surgery, obstetrics and gynecology, cardiovascular procedures, and orthopedic surgeries, just to name a few. When it comes to tissue types, it's commonly used for subcutaneous and skin closures, fascia, and even in intestinal or vascular anastomoses. Choosing the right suture material also matters, and it depends on the tissue and whether you need the suture to be absorbable or not. For deeper tissues, we usually go with absorbable sutures like Vicryl or Monocryl. For skin, non-absorbable options like proline or nylon work best. Monofilament sutures resist infection better, while polyfilament ones provide more knot security. Done correctly, this is a reliable, time-saving technique with excellent cosmetic results. And that's it! The simple, continuous suture, fast, effective, and a great technique to have in your surgical toolkit. 